Hiya, hiya. It's a Joey Reynolds wrap. I've been doing these things for a number of years. I have taken my blood pressure now. Uh, now that I've taken an interest in my health, you know, you get, get a little older. Plus, there's not a lot to do in Florida. It's God's waiting room, and everybody's just, we, we go doctor to doctor. You know, it's, it's combat. You know, my doctor's better than your doctor. <laughs> I got the best surgeon in the world, you know. Uh, so what I've done with my doctor is I have uh, gotten this uh, heart checking device. It's a, uh, a thing that, that checks your blood pressure, you know, which in, in radio and television, uh, we should wear it constantly. It should be a chip implant. But anyway, I take this thing, and I want I want. I took it earlier today, and I want to take it after the broadcast. I want to see how how much difference it's made. Because I use this for my therapy. You know, I get up every morning and I turn this thing on. I don't have any scripts. I don't have any writers. I don't have any ideas. I sit down in front of this thing, and I just ad lib. This is what I do every day. I've been doing this for a couple of years now. And I wonder where it's going to go. I have no idea where it's going to go. Sometimes I'd like to edit, but then I don't because I think, eh, this is just the way it is. And people are doing social networking, and so far it's free, you know, until the government gets its hands on the Internet. I did a thing on that yesterday. Uh, the government's going to want to control this because there's power in this and you run for office. Why? Because the politics is driven by the media. That's why, obviously. So this is media. Uh, this is media rare because I am sitting here and I don't care how many people watch. I'm not looking for ratings, but I'm looking for blood pressure. And I, that's my rating. So after I'm done here, I'm gonna see if I have a 120 over 90 or something, you know, which would give me a really high rating. <laughs> and that's not healthy. But I've changed my diet too, you know. I mean, I, I'm plant-based. Even my, my cosmetics are plant-based now. You know that, that uh, Tide has come out with a plant-based Tide and gain it's it's a it's they charge more but what's why is it wasn't it always plant-based is it uh, maybe because they don't have the chemicals in it i don't know what the formula is for tide all i know is that people have been using it we don't know what it's made of most things we don't know what's made of we've been brushing our teeth with all this stuff the only two people i'm interested in besides morgan and morgan would be ben and jerry I want to make sure that I'm eating the right ice cream. That's all I care about. <laughs> the two Jews from New Hampshire, right? <laughs> That's an oddity. But I'll tell you something here. I've got uh, a, little, a little sample for you as to how you can shift people from this uh, ordinary diet that we have of the drive-through. Uh, incidentally, I do drive through to have my COVID test and uh, they swab my nose, but I'm not gonna drive through and get that $8 chicken sandwich, whatever they call it, from McDonald's. And then the one over at uh, Wendy's, I think they got another version of something. They package it nicer. And incidentally, uh, on, that, on that note, let me just show you. Here's how you shift people from meat to plant. This is pig. This is a pig. <laughs> if you thought you were, you were eating a pig or a cow, <laughs> You might think a little differently then, you know, little lambs of ivy. You, you probably wouldn't like that. <laughs> so th this is this is why you would shift off of this thing. A little bit of meat is okay, uh, preferably uh, a biting into a family member is not good. <laughs> I raised a pig in Philadelphia. I called the pig Wiffle because I was on WIBG and we were fighting WFIL. So it was Wiffle, the pig. I, I would, I, 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 I'd like to make fun of the stations that were on opposite me. You can't do that now, there's too many. But I, was, I, I had the pig on my 10-acre farm in uh, Pennsylvania outside of Philly in a place that was uh, called Bluebell, Blue Balls, Pennsylvania. And I, and I had uh, this pig that I raised, Wiffle, from just a little piglet and, uh, you know, all the way from the beginning of, uh, of, of I was just thinking of, of what, what do they call it again? <laughs> what, what is the child's book that you read about Piglet again? What is that again? <laughs> it just ran across my mind real fast. <laughs> you can tell I don't edit. Okay, what is this? The, the uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh, that's it. We used to have a little, little plastic crap on the seat. We call it Winnie the Poop. That's what we, <laughs> I just thought of all that. Anyway, the pig, Wiffle the pig. Uh, I raised the pig from a little piglet all the way up to 400 pounds, you know, and I had the pig in the house 
because pigs, you know, you can train them. You know that, right? You can toilet train them. I know you don't know this. <laughs> you put paper under them, and that's where they go, you know, just like a dog. I had a great, a great Dane also. As a matter of fact, the Great Dane attacked the pig, and he was bleeding. The pig was bleeding profusely from the ear. So I called the vet, and I said, I had an accident. I said, the dog was eating the pig. And the, the veterinarian said, well, you know, put cold compresses on the ear of the pig and talk gently to it. And, <laughs> because the pig is smarter than the dog, which I didn't know. And so I put the cold compresses, I, I held her and I talked nice to her. Uh, we're announcing our marriage, you know. <laughs> Get out of here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make out with a pig? Yeah, well, <laughs> I know there's a lot of jokes here. So I, <laughs> I took the pig <laughs> And, and eventually we had to get rid of it, you know, I, well, because I, I want to move to L.A. I'm not going to take a pig to L.A. Well, that would be redundant. So I, I took the pig and gave it to a slaughterhouse. Oh, and the thing came back with bacon and ham. And I couldn't eat it because it was like eating a friend, which <laughs> a lot of jokes there, too. You know, <laughs> yeah, we do need editing. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention uh, besides uh, shifting uh, from the meat and the cows and the pigs and the sheep. I want to meet, I want, I, we are sheep, incidentally. Uh, we follow the media. We are, we, we live like sheep. The social networking is imitation of life, you know, uh, what they're doing with the networks now. They're trying to jump into the game because they know politics is boring everybody and how many crime shows are you going to have? They have t too many of them now. There's a glut. So what do they do? They shift into humanism and, uh, and every, every kind of ism you could think of. Now they're talking about plant-based food, like I mentioned. They're talking about uh, shopping at thrift shops. These are all the things I've done all my life. And all of a sudden, they're, they're lead stories. And I noticed that CBS television in the morning has changed their set. They hired a decorator. And they've got this elaborate living room set with the, the carpeting and the lighting and the background. The problem is, they don't change the people. That's what the problem with television is not the set, it's the personalities. They don't have any. They got, we, we have not had a farm team for personalities. We have not developed the new Johnny Carsons, the new people who are wonderful, the new Dick Clarks even, as it were. And, and Ryan Seacrest is not that, incidentally. You know, everybody's down a notch. We're celebrating mediocrity, so we don't develop anybody with greatness. We have them but they're not allowed to practice anywhere. It's like having a great surgeon and then you put him in the, in the prison and say, okay, you can't operate. This is, not, this is not good. So what we have to do is wrestle all of the control away from these broadcasters that own these radio and television stations and they aren't doing anything good with them anyway. They're just running commercials. You know, running four or five, 15 minutes of commercials, five commercials between this and, uh, and three records on the music side, on the talk side. All they do is answer phones and argue, which is passe. Uh, and, and on television, imitating radio, which is a bad move with traffic. I notice even on the CBS News set, the CBS owns a station in Florida. They own the station, the network does. So they have a news weather person after the uh, morning show. And she's dressed like she's going to uh, some sort of a, an, a, a, a ball, you know. I mean, it used to be they would, they would be braless just about to get your attention. Now they're dressing high style, you know, and, and trying to be, uh, trying to mess that, match that set they have on Sunday morning with Jane Pauley, you know, the CBS morning thing. They're trying to do that every day now. They have little, they're playing little chamber music, little trumpets, and trying to get everybody into the, into the occasion of, of fine, fine art and quality. This is after they just killed everybody and everything. <laughs> How are they going to go and, and give us a, a moment of wonderful serenity? I, I'm telling you, boy, you know, if they ever get this right, it won't be during my lifetime because they're not honest. The first thing that has to happen on television, you got to get honest and say, okay, this sucks. And we shouldn't be saying this and we should be saying that. Now, you know, a lot of things are not racist that are said by people, they're concerns. And you have to not give someone a tag because they have an opinion that's based on someone else's teaching. Because you have to find out where it came from. And, and, and digging that, it's, uh, the, and digging it out and finding it out, it has to do with the conversation. 
See, conversationally, like now, I'm, I'm having one with myself. You know, I'm not having one with anybody. But when I did an all-night show for five hours and, and 15 years of it on WR Network, I sat there every night, and I, I did not do five hours of talking. It's impossible. Uh, my program director, David Bernstein, says you're going to be done in about 10 minutes, and then you got the rest of the show. Uh, so you have to have interesting people on there, and that's what we did. You know, my producer gave uh, Myra Channon, she was eclectic, and she put everybody into, uh, into a room, people who do not like or know each other, and we all had a cocktail party without drinks every night. And it was very successful. I closed the door on entertainment radio in New York. That's what they say, and it, it was even in the Daily News uh, uh, said that way. I was the last of the personality disc jockeys who turned into a talk show host who had interesting people. Uh, you know, I mean, Larry King at one time was doing it with a serious vein. Uh, Imus was on a political vein. Howard Stern is on a sex vein. I was on the main vein. And uh, we don't do that anymore because they got rid of it. They got rid of, uh, of, of that style. Uh, and I was the last one to do that kind of thing. So last week we did a show in person at Little Italy in front of a crowd of thousands of people, incidentally, uh, for Little Italy's return of the meatball eating contest. But the show that we did before the meatball eating contest, I had the amazing Kreskin and also Stephen Scott, who's a very young, wonderful comic. You maybe you saw him on America's Got Talent. He's a friar and a, a great, great uh, talent. And we also had, uh, oh, Kreskin got everybody to be quiet. I think I commented on one of my raps about that. So you had, you had Johnny Mandolin, uh, who's Italian, uh, he's been doing the feast for a hundred years, and he plays the mandolin famously around the around the, the world, you know. So we had a great show, and people loved it. It was entertainment. We had fun. We had lived. I, I, I said some things that were over the line. You know, I, I, Rikers Island is a toilet. It's a horrible place. And uh, I tried to help close it a couple of years ago with McNear Lair, with Jim Lear, and uh, uh, I don't know why we didn't succeed. We didn't, but now this this mayor of New York wants to close Rikers Island. It's a horrible place. Even some of the jail cells don't work, which means prisoners can go out. That's what I think of when I hear that. But uh, I said, you know, he was, uh, what was my joke? Oh, I said that uh, uh, the mayor was going to be here for the meatball eating contest, but he canceled because he was packing Rudy Giuliani's things to go to Riker Island. That's what it, that, that was a joke. See, it's political. You know, you, you say something political, you get everybody in trouble. And what did I say? I said, yeah, there's a new Italian and Chinese restaurant because Chinatown seems to be taking over Little Italy. Well, they're, they're paying for it. That's why they're buying buildings. And I said, there's a new Chinese-Italian restaurant. It's called Fangu. So, you know, this is what I do. And this is what, we, we, what we're doing on the air every day. And this is what we need to do, have a little return to this personality thing and get rid of all this other horse crap. I'm, you know, it's okay to have it, but we need more. You need to have some stunning, outstanding personalities who are interesting. Do you realize that I've been on doing this right now? This is the third year I've done this. This is pre-pandemic, and I've been doing this thing every day from my porch, just about. Once in a while, I'll, I'll take a field trip and go in the kitchen. But uh, this thing has been on now so far 13 minutes. Now, if you if you stayed this long, there must be something interesting here. You may have seen something here that you thought, wow, I didn't know that, or I'd like to know that, or the oh wow factor. Yeah, I, I think this is interesting to have. I would like to hear this kind of uh, stuff on the radio. I'd like to see this on the television. I think my phone is enough to watch this. I will, I will send the signal out. This is what we need to do with younger, new people. And so I call it, New clear thinking. We need new clear thinking. New clear thinking. That's what we need. So I'm Joey Reynolds, and uh, you can forward this to anybody you think has any uh, power, because uh, everybody's wrestling for it all the time. They they think that money will will give you power. Uh, it, it gives you success, and power is not success. Power is as as a being. It's a state of being. I don't have a lot of power in certain areas. But you know what I have power over? I have power over my own mouth. <laughs> now I'm going to go take my test and see if my blood pressure went up. And I'll get back to you. It's a Reynolds wrap.